Hi and welcome to another tutorial about Fusion. This time I'll tell you about macros. Macros, as you probably know, are collections of tools that you can reuse easily across compositions. For this tutorial I'll create a macro that uses uh, Fusion's new world position pass information to create a noise. This could be useful, um, for example, to add a bit of variation across uh, the texture. And the nice thing, since this noise will be based on the world position pass, the nice thing is that it will be glued to your uh, geometry while the camera moves. So, for this example, I have loaded an OBJ model of the Stanford Dragon. And as you can see, this image has world position pass coordinates. They are printed in the pixel inspector subview. To create our noise, we'll use the custom tool. And I'll just use the red channel to type in a noise command, which is based on the position pass coordinates. As you can see, we have a noise texture in the red channel, which, as the camera moves, will stay glued to the object. So, the next thing would be to copy this to all the color channels, but this is actually a bad idea, because it will calculate the noise three times. So the better solution is to use one of the intermediate variables here. I'll just put the formula in here and use the intermediate value in all the color channels. All right, now we have our noise pattern. It would be nice to provide the user of our macro with some more control over the noise pattern. And lucky for us, we have some controls here in the custom tool that we can use. I've already set up this tool with a couple of variables that I'm gonna use in my formula now. The first three variables will be scaling factors and I can use them in my formula by using n1, n2, and n3. And as you can see, I can now control the scaling of the noise pattern in the x, y, and z axis. All right, now as you can see in the pixel inspector, the noise is actually centered around zero and it has positive as well as negative values. I'd like to provide the user with a slider to adjust the gain and brightness of the noise pattern to his liking. For this, I have set up a multiplier and an offset value. I'll set the multiplier to one and I'll update my formula. N4 is my multiplier, and I'll use N5 as an offset. Now I can use the offset slider to increase the brightness of the noise, and the multiplier will act as a gain slider. As you can see, I have already prepared three more variables. I'll use them to shift the noise texture in the X, Y, and Z direction. As you can see, the background is affected by the custom tool as well. This is because it has world position coordinates of zero and the custom tool doesn't care about that. It will just treat these pixel values as proper world position pass coordinates, which they aren't in this case. So to get rid of this, I'll just pre-multiply the image by its alpha channel. I'll use a channel boolean for that. Operation multiply and the alpha foreground in each of these, and this is set to do nothing. Now I can play around with the noise without affecting the background. All right, now let's turn this into a macro. I need to select both of my tools, right click, and select the create macro option. The dialog that pops up will provide me with all the inputs that are available in the tools that I have selected. 
and it has already um, used some common sense to determine uh, the main output as well as the main input of my new macro tool. I can rename these inputs, for example, these uh, th three image inputs are based on the custom tool and are called image 1, 2, 3. My macro would be better if it was just called input. And of course, I have to provide the user of my macro uh, with a means to change my variables that I have defined. All right. Now just close the dialog and I'll save my macro in my macro folder. Now I can use the add tool menu, select my tutorial macro, and there it is. It has all my sliders of the custom tool in a nice condensed interface. Let's improve this macro. For starters, these sliders aren't really user-friendly. I can reset them to default, which is zero, uh, which is not really what we want. We want them to default to one and we want to have another kind of slider like for example in a brightness contrast. As you can see the slider is centered around one and the left half of the slider goes all the way down to zero while the right half of the slider goes all the way up to five. So this is actually a non-linear slider and of course we can implement this for our macro as well. The secret lies in so-called user controls, which are custom controls that you can add to any tool inside Fusion via a special tool script, which is called user controls. It will pop up a dialog and it will allow you to add custom controls like sliders, checkboxes, buttons and so on to any tool you like. And this is very useful for macros because you can create a custom interface for the macro and you don't have to rely on the actual sliders that you have published. So let's just add a new control. It's a number control. It's supposed to be a slider with a range from 0 to 10 centered around 1. This tool script has created a new tab here on the custom tool called user, which has our new scaling slider. And as you can see at the bottom of the screen, scalex is all also the scripting name that we can use in an expression. So instead of using the number we have selected here, we'll just add an expression to this slider and refer to the scalex variable. And now we can use our own slider to control the scaling. We can, of course, not only add sliders, but also checkboxes. So let's call the user control script again. I'd like to provide the user of my macro with an option to enable or disable the post multiplication. It's also a number type, but the input control is a checkbox. And now our channel booleans also has the new user tab with the post multiply checkbox in it. Of course it doesn't do anything yet. We'll add an expression to the blend slider that refers to our post multiply checkbox. And now we can use the checkbox to toggle our blend slider between 1 and 0 depending on the state of the checkbox. Let's republish our macro. In this case, we have changed quite a lot, so we have to recreate the whole macro dialog. Let's provide the user with a post multiply control that we have added in the user tab. Let's rename our image input. publish all our values. Well, actually, we're not publishing X scale anymore. We're using our own custom control down here. Close, yes. And let's overwrite our old macro. 
if we add our macro now, you'll notice that the interface is kind of messed up. The post multiply checkbox is at the top and our new slider is at the bottom. Since a macro is nothing more than just a text file, we can use a text editor to rectify the order of the controls here. I've opened the macro in Skite. And right at the top you can see the array of inputs and we can just copy and paste them around to change the order. It doesn't matter that the inputs are called 9, 2, 3 now. What's important is the order of inputs here. I can save this and just re-add my macro. As you can see, the slider is at the top now and the post multiply checkbox at the bottom. Of course, our macro isn't complete yet. We have to change the other sliders and the default values have to be set correctly. Head over to VFXpedia and go to the settings and macro section. Uh, there you'll find a lot of macros as well as the complete WPP noise macro that I've created. And at the bottom of the page you'll find a lot more information about how to edit macros.